having made his debut as one of the original playable Vault Hunters back in Borderlands, Mordecai was born on the planet of Artemis. He was a great marksman, even having won an interplanetary sharpshooting competition with a revolver at the age of 17. But the thing about this competition is that all of the other competitors accused him of cheating because everyone was using a sniper while Mordecai used a pistol. Eventually, they were capable of getting him banned from the competition for unsportsmanlike conduct, though many who witnessed the competition noted that he didn't display any unsportsmanlike behavior until after the competition and after the accusations arose. Out of a sort of vengeance, Mordecai then began traveling from planet to planet, searching for what he describes as everything this frickin' universe owes me, which to him means better guns and unlimited cash. At some point in his life, Mordecai also wound up acquiring a rare and endangered pet which he would go on to name Bloodwing because it sounded cool. While not much is known about Bloodwing or how he got him in the first place, it is what served as the reason Mordecai got a bounty placed on him for 1 million credits, listed as wanted for poaching and being in possession of an endangered species, with an extra million for Bloodwing. This would lead some bounty hunters from time to time to track and hunt Mordecai down. The two would travel for some time, fulfilling his quest of guns and money, and he eventually made his way to Pandora to make a better life for himself. And in Mordecai's origin comic, released on January 23rd, 2013, we get to see the story of what led up to Mordecai stepping on Marcus's bus. While on this planet, he accidentally stumbled into a bandit's territory. Here, he was forced into a fight, and while he put up a good effort, he was ultimately bested and left for dead. That is, until a woman named Esimir stumbles across him and helps him out. While she would begin taking him to safety, this is where they both met Marcus and Scooter. While Esimir dissuades Mordecai from trusting them, saying that no one on this planet is here to help him, Marcus would still give Mordecai his business card and sales pitch about how the world needs adventurers. As Esimir escorts Mordecai further into the Borderlands, it is revealed that she actually led him straight to the bandits that left him for dead. It turns out she is really a bounty hunter who had been tracking Mordecai due to his bounty and now she wants to split the reward with everyone. Instead, Mordecai calls down Bloodwing, who's been following them this entire time, cutting off Esamir's arm and saving him. He then cuts a deal with the bandits, allowing them to take Esamir as she's also worth a bounty but only one-tenth of his own, or die. The bandits take Esamir and Mordecai looks back at Marcus's card and decides to take him up on his deal. And that's how Mordecai wound up on Marcus's bus. At least as far as the comics go. Unless the game wants to provide us with any more details or alterations about his past, this I would say is probably the most backstory you're gonna get about Mordecai for now. But this is where the events of the first game take place. On the bus, he is greeted by Roland and Lilith, and later they're all introduced to Brick. He, alongside the other three, are all guided by Angel and Handsome Jack through Pandora, meeting the residents like Zed, Marcus, Scooter, and Tannis. As they collect the pieces of the Vault Key, all while being in opposition to Atlas and the Crimson Lance. In the end, they're all capable of forming the Vault Key and stopping the Destroyer's feeding cage. Mordecai's next big involvement came from the game's second DLC, Moxie's Underdome. You see, Mad Moxie had opened up a coliseum to help her find a husband. All four of the Vault Hunters would take part in it, however, canonically speaking, Mordecai wins the whole thing and he begins dating Moxie. Actually, he sort of wore her down. Initially, she just offered him money and guns, but all he would do was ask for her, which it eventually worked. Though their relationship would be very short-lived. We don't have an exact time frame on when they dated, but due to him being too inattentive as well as developing an alcohol problem, she actually ran off with a new man she met who was Handsome Jack. Mordecai would obviously take part in the events of the other DLCs as well, helping Athena put an end to the Crimson Lance and stopping Claptrap's revolution. But after their whole journey, everyone came to form an attachment to the planet and those who resided on it. In an effort to prevent any other mega corporation from taking advantage of or using it, the four were all founders of the Crimson Raiders, a group of soldiers formed to protect the people. Eventually, as the Crimson Lance began forming more of a following, the events of the pre-sequel would take place, which caused Handsome Jack to develop a hatred for Lilith and Roland, which caused him to begin sieging the planet in search of the warrior. While Mordecai didn't have anything to do with the creation of Handsome Jack, he was the recipient of one of his attacks. 
more specifically the fall of New Haven. All four of the original Vault Hunters were bested by Wilhelm and forced to relocate to Sanctuary. But Mordecai, whether on his own choice or being stationed by others, didn't stay in Sanctuary with the rest. He was instead used as a scout in the Tundra Express with Bloodwing. A fun detail about Bloodwing is in the first game, Mordecai was always referring to him as a male, but in the second game, Bloodwing is referred to as female. It turns out the species Bloodwing is are born as male, but halfway through its life changes to female. Anyway, while out in the Tundra Express, the two would continuously keep an eye out for Hyperion activity, and one day he accidentally fell for the bait Handsome Jack had laid. He picks up on a lead that the vault key that Tannis had had taken from her was being transported via train. He informed Lilith of this and told her to send the new set of vault hunters who had arrived to the planet to help him out. While he, alongside Tiny Tina, would assist the new vault hunters in hijacking the train, Mordecai doesn't provide too much assistance after they're all ambushed by Wilhelm. The next time Mordecai has much relevance is a bit later into the Crimson Raiders' goal. When a new plan is formed to sneak into the bunker, multiple items are required. One of them is a software upgrade for Claptrap so he can bypass Hyperion security. He and Bloodwing would go to the Wildlife Exploitation Preserve to obtain this. But the plan goes sour and they're ambushed by Hyperion troops and Mordecai is only able to escape after Bloodwing causes a distraction and is subsequently captured. Jack would begin performing all types of elemental slag experimentation on her, and while Mordecai and the new Vault Hunters fight their way through the facility and try to sedate her, everyone arrives too late as Jack kills Bloodwing. After these events, he returns to Sanctuary, wallowing in sadness. Later on in the story, when Roland is killed and Lilith is kidnapped, it falls on both Mordecai and Brick to lead the Crimson Raiders. And these two, alongside the new Vault Hunters, all inevitably lead an assault towards Handsome Jack. While both Mordecai and Brick would have their bard struck down by a moon blitz, they manage to survive and arrive just in time to see Lilith saved and Handsome Jack stopped. But Mordecai's sorrow over losing Bloodwing wouldn't be without a silver lining. She had actually given birth to a hatchling. As revealed in the Son of Cromorax DLC, Mordecai named him Talon and actually gave up drinking so to be a better and more responsible parent. While Mordecai doesn't play too much of a big role in Borderlands 2's DLCs, probably the most important one was Tiny Tina's assault on Dragon's Keep. Through this whole campaign, we get to see how Tina deals with the loss and grievance of losing Roland, and by the end of it all, Lilith, Brick, and Mordecai become significantly closer to Tina. Anyway, fast forward some time and we reach Tales from the Borderlands. Lilith gets a job offering from a woman named Valerie to help stop Athena. Having witnessed her helping Handsome Jack on Elpis, she sends both Mordecai and Brick to apprehend her and bring her back to face judgment. While it would be a rough and scrappy fight, they are inevitably capable of dragging her back to Sanctuary to face a firing squad. It is here the Watcher saves her life and warns them all of a war that is coming. After this, Mordecai's role within the Commander Lilith in the Fight for Sanctuary DLC would not be very substantial. After Colonel Hector leads an attack taking over Sanctuary, all of the characters are forced to abandon its safety. Mordecai winds up getting split from everyone with Talon, who makes his official debut here. Mordecai would serve most of this campaign infected by one of Hector's spores while the characters search for a cure. He's inevitably saved with the help of Tiny Tina, and after this, he, Brick, and Tina would go on to dub themselves the B-Team. Initially, it was just going to be Brick and Tina, but Mordecai decided that he might want in on that life. Thanks for saving my life, Vault Hunter. You know, being half-man, half-plant got me thinking. I ain't ready to set down roots. Brick and Tina were talking about heading out on their own. Maybe I should go with them. Once Colonel Hector is defeated, instead of staying by Lilith's side to help the Raiders, they instead choose to have a smaller role as the B-Team, acting as more contractors. While events between Borderlands 2 and 3 are six years apart, both he and Brick continuously watched over Tina as her mother and father figures. Mordecai would actually try dating again, but it didn't work too well. I tried dating again, but Brick and Tina always scare him off. It's like being the youngest child all over again. When it comes to Borderlands 3 itself, he and the B-Team don't play too much of a role at all. Once Sir Hammerlock is kidnapped by the COV, Wainwright Jacobs enlists them to help save him. And on their task, the new new set of Vault Hunters help them out and rescue Sir Hammerlock. Aside from that, Mordecai doesn't play too much of a role in stopping the COV. 
However, we learn from another side mission is that Mordecai at some point had actually befriended a young girl named Gracie, who was in love with Vault Hunters. He had intended on surprising her for her birthday, but she unfortunately was killed by Varkids. In her honor, you still take part in the festivities. Talon during this game also lays an egg, so Mordecai might have two pets next time we see him. Another fun fact about Mordecai is that he and Zero had a snipe off where the winner got the other's rifle and Mordecai won. Zero and I had a snipe off of the century a while back. Winner got the other's rifle. Maybe I'll give it back to him someday. <laughs> But for now, that does it for the history of Mordecai. If there are any other characters you'd like to see me do the history of, then be sure to let me know in the comments below. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.